I want to invite uh, Gautam and uh, he is one of my co-worker, also my lead. And he is like a really inspiring artist to me because like I've been in the industry same as him, but still uh, the stuff he taught me was, you know, pretty ridiculous. Um, he's a really awesome modeler, you know, uh, the tips he gave me was I uh, improved my work uh, to, uh, you know, to really good extent. And yeah, Gotham, it's all you and you can give a little bit of background and we can go from there. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, I was just like trying to connect my Bluetooth here. Nice. All right, it's all good. All yeah, yeah. yeah, we can hear voice. you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so hey everyone, um, Gautam, as uh, Dinesh mentioned, I work for Spin VFX, that's uh, based in Toronto, Canada. I'm a model lead there. Um, since uh, joining Spin VFX, I've uh, worked on several films and shows, uh, including Umbrella Academy in Netflix, In the Tall Grass, Zombieland 2 Double Tap, and um, The Expanse, like all seasons. Uh, prior to joining Spin VFX, I worked as an asset artist uh, in a studio called Crow VFX. That was like my first job in Canada. And uh, before that, I studied 3D animation at uh, Seneca College of Applied Arts. And yeah, I did my undergrad in engineering uh, in information technology uh, in India where I grew up. Yeah, so thanks Gautam. Uh, can you like show your reel and uh, go from there? Um... Sure. So can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Hello? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, that's the slingshot asset that I built for, um, I think it was like season three in Expanse. Uh, it, was, um, it, was a, it was a good good asset that I built in Maya and like was uh, textured all in substance. Was another asset, like a set extension. Um, um, inside the Razorback, actually, Dinesh, that's the, might be recognizing this one because you did that spaceship, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Razorback, yeah. Yeah, so that's the inside of it. Oh, nice. This is just like another studio project that we're working in. It's just like some other background set stuff with a lot of assets that were laid out afterwards. Another spaceship asset from Expand Season 2. The, uh, this one actually was like pictured in Mari instead. I, I wasn't like very familiar with Painter at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Then this this was like the opening shot for season one in Expand. So like basically all the all the assets was done by me except for that uh, moon surface that you saw before. That one over there. That's pretty much it, and uh, that is my art station page where I have like uh, all those spaceships that I just showed you in my demo reel. They have like high res screenshots here and a little like uh, just like a uh, first pass uh, breakdown on it, and 
and uh, like some of the substance screen grabs there, wireframe, then like the look DP. Yeah, I like the shot compilation that. So that goes for this one and the other spaceships too. Some of the character work also here with a little breakdown in it. Yeah. So, what's next? Should we uh, start with a little uh, with uh, what I've been working on? Uh, uh, that word concept? Yeah, so the people who are here are like um, new to VFX and can you like explain like, you know, as a three, 3D modeling lead, like, you know, what are the duties you have like, you know, at work? Like you can keep it like general. Okay, can you, can you repeat that please, the last part? Oh, I mean like, you know, your day-to-day -day activities, like for example, like, you know, as a lead, like what exactly you do in a studio or like, you know, how do you manage artists under you and stuff like that? Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, uh, like at spin, I basically like tossed like any other art, uh, any other artist uh, like tossed with my whatever asset that I have to work on on that project. But at the same time, I have to like be, uh, uh, I have to like also responsible for reviewing stuff that comes in from other artists uh, in my team. Uh, review it in a way thoroughly enough so that you know it won't break down the pipeline and uh, like i'm the i'm one of the steps that uh, before it goes to the supervisors i have to like check it with the shot camera with the tracking geo if there was a scan that was done before i have to check it in a way so that it it, uh, it works well and that it won't it would just like go smoothly down the line uh, in the pipeline so basically that's uh, one of the major responsibilities that I have as a model lead. Uh, also with that, it's just basic, uh, you know, designing some kind of a, a model, model as in like, if there's some new assets coming in, so I would, you know, go to that artist and would discuss like how we can achieve this with that, with the time given for that particular asset. So that's something uh, other than the just reviewing stuff, I would do as a lead with the artist yeah cool thanks Gautam yeah so you can uh, show your uh, latest uh, personal work the creature I was uh, really excited to see about so sure yeah. so yeah after that was it's just like fun stuff that I've been working on it's like more of a bird creature I don't know what to call it it's just a, a hybrid of um, uh, like a cassowary bird and a uh, and a swamp pin, uh, something that I like do after work just to like uh, just as a hobby, I guess, and to also to test things out, like it's like substance painter, like they they put like an update out there, so it's like also good if you like have like a personal ongoing project going on, it really helps you like test it out with your own. Uh, own stuff that you're working on at home. So yeah, basically, it's actually it started with like a uh, like a quick sculpt that I did in ZBrush. So I'm gonna like share all the screen grabs. It's gonna be hard for me to like open each and every file. So I kind of uh, put this together for you guys. So that was like something that I started with like just dynamishing and just, you know, pulling and pushing stuff in and out and using alphas from uh, Surface Mimic and like texturing XYZ stuff. And uh, then I realized that, you know, it looked more like a T-Rex kind of a creature and less like a bird. So I kind of like went in and um, started matching my skull with uh, some uh, anatomy uh, uh, references here. So basically I, I found this like, cassowary anatomy and uh, I like did a little draw over on top of it to just like see where my limbs are and where the where the whole structure fits on top of that skeleton. So basically yeah you see like a little progress so I kind of went from there it's a little drawer 
and uh, this is a sculpt that I came up with that was like some kind of a, that was just an initial sculpt. And then I finessed it more to make it uh, look more like this. So, so once I had like the dynamish, um, uh, dynamish design uh, to some to extent, to some extent that I could like go into Maya and uh, retop it. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, what I got out of it. So that's like retop with it like this and yeah as you see it's like very low poly now and i also like made it in a way so that it was would be rig friendly because i wanted to like pose it in the end and uh once i was done with this uh, initial sculpt like also like going with this project uh, i know it was a personal project but i kind of give myself a deadline so that i won't overdo on it or burn out because i was i'm also like working my full-time job so I want to like keep everything very simple and uh, not too heavy so as you see it's like if you look at this creature it's uh, you know just have like a first pass and like a second pass to it there's no like tertiary details on it a lot that I thought I would put it in substance afterwards so basically if I really zoom in it's, it's still a little rough roughed out and not really all finesse like it, it's good enough to like take it into substance and texture it and make like a nice concept out of this but yeah i kept it to like some kind of a, uh, just to the second read i don't know why i went with those with kind of design uh for the for the for the arms but i, I thought it kind of looked good yeah, it kind of looks good. It kind of looks like he's like, um, he's kind of like cute as well as he's like, you know, badass, you know. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's the thing, you know, I like when I saw it, you know, that's why I was really inspired and like I was really into that creature. So mm -hmm. what was your inspiration like to do this creature? I think it's just I wanted to like do something with the bird anatomy. I've, I've done like some characters human anatomy stuff before so this was just like to change up a little bit because it's got like very interesting feature like if you see the ostrich leg uh, go back to the going back to the references like it's got some really good anatomical uh, features here and thought it would be like moved to sculpt in and stuff like that it was really uh, curious to do that Plus, like making a blend between the the spawn pen, which has got like this kind of a head on top, so I thought it could be used as an armor or something, and I would just like exaggerate that design. Uh, I didn't go with that overall shape, but just like took the head part of it and kind of morphed it with uh, how well, we see on a cassowary like that. So there were like some really cool features there, and I got like inspired from looking at the real images actually. So was a lot going on. I didn't really go with that kind of a, uh, like a forehead, uh, but uh, yeah. So going back to ZBrush. <clears throat> so once that was done, I decimated the whole thing by retaining the UVs. I didn't really went that old when I'm exporting the displacement maps out. <clears throat> and uh, you know make it work with the shader and everything it was just like much easier for me just to do like a, a decimated mesh of this by keeping the uvs and like take it into substance directly i think uh, that really worked well so so uh, you uh, exported the decimated mesh like the irs mesh so that it's easier for you to retain details in maya as well as in substance right Right, exactly. Okay, cool. I was thinking I would like test it out with all the displacement stuff, but I think yeah, it was just I kind of cheated there that way just to keep all the details intact. So basically, when I got that in Maya, I like uh, put a like a small rig in it. Was very quick, and then I added these cards as a, as for fun. So like all these. Uh, 
thin ones they're basically coming from a fiber mesh and like these things i like model them and like placed it nicely so that it would look like that it's uh, uh just to mimic some kind of ostrich fur there and yeah and once everything was done in my i took this in substance Um, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's very mediocre. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, so here uh, it's all decimated mesh and like substance. It's like how it's evolving. It's pretty good, like how it can, you know, work well with the uh, high-res meshes too. And um, should I go with a little breakdown on the on the layers that I created? Yeah, sure. You can pick like one item at the top, and you can like explain, you know, how you you know uh, created it, so that would be okay. easier, so people so, know that yeah, how you started. It. Yeah. So I'll just yeah, I'll just uh, take body. Mm-hmm. Oh, you were saying something? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, basically for the body, I think just like using all that stuff that comes from the package, I think that's suffice. And uh, I just like started with the creature skin green. I think it's somewhere in the smart materials. Then I uh, it'd be better if I shut them out. Just a moment. So you did have like a lot of references for this, right? So like before you start texturing, uh, did you have, did you grab a lot of references or the reference you showed as like in the pure F, that's the one you went with? I think I was looking at the reference, but I, I was also like going with my own way with mm -hmm. uh, how the colors would work like, because in substance it's very easier, easy to like get around with uh, matching colors. Like if you have it like nice split up in different fill layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically for the for the colors, I actually took this reference and I inverted that just to get like, just to see like how those, that a little pinkish color would work on the head here. And then just like use some of the blue that was like working well with that particular yellow there. So that's how was like one of the things that I was doing with the matching up with the color so that it doesn't completely look like a, like the bird. So yeah, another one that I saw here was this that I kind of tried and mimic on my asset here. take a moment that I just kind of shut off my layers here oh okay pause. sure yeah so like are you um, like like viewing it in like 4k or 2k or 1k so this is on 2k oh 2k moment. okay yeah sure are you talking about uh, no no that's the one yeah that's the one yeah. yeah yeah that's the one I was talking about so uh, so did you do like a 8k texture 4k or do you have like different items for it I did a 4K. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that was sufficient from the uh, angle that I was, uh, the camera angle that I had set for it. Mm -hmm. So basically, I should like, so this is the camera angle that I had. And, uh, and looking from this camera angle, I thought that 4K was enough. So that's what I was using. Oh, okay, cool. So whenever I was, when I was texturing, I was like making all the decision, looking, looking the the creature from this distance and not really going, not really zooming in and like doing all that finesse work. Yeah. So basically that, and then just 
putting in fill layers and like adding colors to it. At the moment, it's just like all gold colors with just like mask pattern painted on it. And then add a little grunge just so that it gets like a nice color breakup. Then just some highlights here and there on the, on the spine and on the, on the neck area. Grunge overall, the eyelids there. I hope I'm not uh, rushing it too fast. No, 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 you're not rushing it. So you're literally like, um, like treating this as Photoshop, just like creating a layer, masking it, and painting on top, top on it. So it's easier yeah. for you to go and fix it. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, another skin take patches that I created, stuff like that, just to add more breakup. Then painted all these alphas here. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. Like just like stop there because yeah, it's, the sky's the limit. Like there's so much you can do. Like but I just like kind of stopped and thought I would just like take the pictures in in V Ray and like um, you know start my look process there. And uh, yeah. So how long does it took you to uh, like? Um... Like as a as a ballpark, like you know, how long does it took you to finish this character or this creature? Uh, I don't recall that much, but like I gave myself like two weeks for this, and it got like said like to around three, three and a half, mm -hmm. like two and a half to work though. But it's like not like the whole day; it's just like three hours every day. I would come back from work and we just like work a little bit on it, and. Um, yeah, that's why I like was like rushing into it so that I could just build something that I can uh, get like uh, that would enable me to test out the software also, you know, and then you know, kind of revise on my some of my rigging skills so that I don't forget anything, you know, and like also make like a nice uh, art piece for myself that I can put on art station basically. Oh, nice. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I just like kept everything very simple. Like primarily, I thought uh, I was like aiming to like get everything done in ZBrush at first because uh, this is where I was thinking that all the details would come off from, and then substance would just be like a, a coat of uh, like a other layer on top of it with the right roughness uh, for skin and for feathers and so on and so forth. Um, another thing, it's the high channel i kind of painted that a lot in substance so, so to have to some more breakdown the, the... Okay, go now to have some more breakdown so I get you. no no yeah. the eye channel uh, the eye channel you uh, you painted so you used as a bump to break it more in maya right yeah okay so it's basically wherever i would see that you know, the light's not falling in properly. I would, you know, make a layer there and uh, just use the, the high channel. Go with the brush. So it doesn't look flat, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's some areas that I didn't put in ZBrush at first, so I would just like do it in, in Substance. That's uh, what I was testing out also, that how the height map could be effective. Mm -hmm. Also, I was like planning on taking this height map and see if I could blend it with my displacement that I got from ZBrush, but I haven't tested that uh, yet. So uh, it'd be great because then I don't have to, I can like, uh, save all that work from going back in ZBrush and then doing that sculpting uh, uh, corrections and then decimate it and bring it back in substance that I was thinking if I can tweak the displacement map itself in substance would be nicer. 
Yeah, of course, yeah. So, but... yeah, so, yeah, it, it, it's very effective. Like, if I have to add a little volume, it works really nice. As far as it's not going on the silhouette, it's, it works pretty well. Nice. And, yeah, and especially with the new substance now, with the, where you have uh, the ability to paint across the UV tiles, I think this should be pretty good. Yeah, it makes the workflow faster, right? And it's also yeah. easy. We don't have to jump from softwares to softwares. Right. So, well, basically once like I, had, I was happy with my textures, I was I was thinking I would like go with my first uh, fast rendering and then would see where it needs more work on it. So basically I went in back in Maya, I posed my character and started rendering and basically just went back and forth a lot between Substance and Maya just to get that look right. Yeah. So for posing, yeah. like, did you look into a lot of references or like, uh, like, did you post it like based on like it looks cool or? Uh, not really. I was just like looking at the render and seeing that if it works well, it would like anything that looked cool, I was just going with that idea basically. And yeah, there was, yeah, I was looking at the reference also as I went, but I wanted to like have a little creative freedom that way also where I can like uh, decide on myself what, what looks what, what looks good to me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, and this was like a blend of uh, V-Ray standard material and uh, subsurface material. And I blended with the with the thickness map, uh, the auxiliary map that exports from uh, Substance Painter. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So for the fibers, like uh, the fire and stuff, did you paint something in Substance too, or like? Yeah, this was all done in Substance. Um, this was uh, actually. This is all. Uh, if I show you my UV tile, it's basically just uh, overlapping UVs. And I kind of chose one of them as dark blue, a little different tones of red, one little turquoise, uh, turquoise and then um, just like add opacity map on it. And uh, that worked pretty well in Vire. Oh, nice. Yeah. First, and I for thought the fiber mesh. Mm -hmm. It's again like I auto UV it and just like add another fill layer texture because it's like so small and so dense. It didn't really matter to put any detail and some kind of bump on it. Nice. That's a pretty good uh, workflow. Uh, can you show us like some of the renders uh, you showed me? So this is just the grayscale. This is like the final look of it. Mm -hmm. I did tweak, cheat a little bit with some of the uh, like overdrawing, overpainting on some of the stuff, which I was thinking I would bring it back in uh, my textures. Okay. But uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> so this is like the final look and I have also, yeah, that's the, it's a close up for it. So yeah, everything worked pretty good. I just did like a little overpainting on some of the areas, added the little, you know, fur on it. Nice. So did you do the eyes too or? Uh... Yeah. Oh, nice. Not in the draw, but it's just. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's all textured here. It's really um, like crazy how the eyes need to be modeled for the birds because it have to be like, you know, like in a certain angle to make it look real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, it just happened with the lighting setup that I had. So, mm -hmm. but I, I know what you mean by that. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, I think that's... Um, Nice. Yeah. That was a pretty good uh, breakdown. Uh, guys, do you guys have any questions so far?
Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, cool. Uh, so, guys, so I prepared a questioner uh, for the persons who are comes to this session. Uh, they will be answering this ten questions. So, um, so I think I can share it, or, or else like Gautam can share it too. So, let's hear you know what you have to. Say. So, just read out and answer them. Uh, yeah, you can read out or else. You're on mute. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can read out and answer it. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Thanks. Okay. So, okay. so what did you think about CG industry overall? Uh. Well, I can speak from my experience. Like I've just, I'm only seven years in, but from when I started and till now, I think it's it's a, like a very fast-pacing industry um, with all the development and innovation. Like uh, again, like speaking from my experience, I've seen a rapid growth and with so many like new stuff that's come in with the, with the new softwares and everything that get released. So it's 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 going pretty good with it. Now, when it comes to uh, uh, the quantity of work, I think it's just like now the new streaming medium with Netflix, Amazon, and, and the others. Uh, I think there's like more demand, and uh, the, the quantity of work is like increased a lot, and then it keeps on it'll keep on increasing. Um, yeah, again, it's like extremely innovative, and it's like a bit different career i i say if you like uh, if you want to like get into the cg industry uh, as compared to the other careers because it involves this like creative technical blend which is like a bit unique and yeah it's pretty good so next question uh yes yeah, I got them, yeah. All right. What sparked your interest in this industry? Uh, I think it's just, uh, yeah, I was like always a creative person from the very beginning. I was like not too technically inclined. Uh, like I didn't want it, like a technical job or anything. I was like more on the drawing side of it and painting and everything. And, um, uh, Growing up, I used to like watch all these movies, and I was like very curious uh, in order to know like how it's all made. So yeah, uh, I think after like doing my undergrad, there's like this, a small course I did, like a three D animation course, and then where they taught like Maya and like basic texturing with Photoshop, and that's really got me going that way, and yeah. And then, yeah, that was pretty much it. So what are some challenges that I've faced before working in the industry? I think, uh, well, just if, if I talk about like the, when I was starting. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, I think at that time, it's just like you hardly know a lot of stuff. So you have like all these questions on how to get your first job, what uh, area or what aspect to specialize in. Like that was like one of the, the biggest challenges that I had also along with, with the real, like how I should make it in a way so that it would work and would get me a job. Also. With all of that, the competition was also something that I have to be uh, aware of and, you know, work accordingly. Um, another challenge is like I was an international student when I came to Canada. So, of course, like the idea of the work visa and how I can, you know, um, tackle that with my work experience so that I stay here longer and get my extension. That was like an ongoing challenge that I was facing. I think it's not something related with CG stuff, but like it was a part of my career that I had to be 
way to be concerned about. Yeah. And uh, next question. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give someone entering CG? Um, I think it's the same way it's to, I guess, keep keep learning on things. It's like really important to train your eye. I see that it becomes a little stagnant sometimes. So like always be on a lookout and uh, of like what's going on with the with the new releases, what uh, tools are coming in, what how and what other people, what artists around the world are doing so that you can, you know, keep your, uh, keep yourself up to that mark. Basically, yeah, something that uh, the, uh, the newcomer should be, should be doing. And uh, yeah. How do you motivate yourself as an artist? Yeah, basically the same way, like, um, I go on art station and uh, it really motivates on how what what people publishes there. It can either motivate you or also like maybe discourage you also. It's it's up to you how you how you take that um, uh, like good artwork that's been published on these uh, on these websites. So basically, yeah, I pick up a lot of motivation there, and uh, yeah. Do you think the artist should have people skills? Well, yeah, sure, but that won't hurt. Um, people skills, yeah, I think it's it's important to have it. It's like why not have it? I would say that it's a very yes or no question there. So yes, I'm back for sure. What was the most challenging work have you done so far? I think um, challenging would be at the time when I wasn't very skillful at in my at that point of my career, and I was like given this big asset to work on. And uh, yeah, excuse me. And at that time, I think I had to like learn Mari overnight, and uh, had to make it work so that it would work well with the shots that I was given. So that was for like expand season one. It was uh, one of the main sequences battles where this ship gets blown up and all that so that was like one of the most uh, challenging work that I had to do I was just like went, went a little crazy there because I didn't know the right tools and how to achieve that kind of quality and uh, but I kind of learned it at the same time I was working on it so it all it all together and I, I got to keep my job <laughs> that is crazy yeah uh, next one is, what are some of the creative suggestions that can be applied in the CG industry? Um, I didn't really get this question. So, can you elaborate? Yeah. yeah, so it means like, you know, um, like what you can like, you know, um, like give some suggestions to CG industry. So it's kind of like available to a lot of people. Like how to make it better? Yeah. Oh well, uh, you know, as I see it, also like I'm not that far in uh, with my experience to like comment anything on this. But uh, what I feel and like what other what uh, some of my other co-workers feel about this, like the, the con content complexity is like also increasing, and the time is getting shorter for that. So for like. Every everything it's it's like it's supposed to be done in a in a rush. Uh, uh, thankfully, in my studio, that's really managed well with how people are given time. But like, if I see overall, with that's like an ongoing thing that concerns people. That you know, if uh, there was like a bit of time management thing, because I think like uh, just to avoid burnout and like an overall well being. Basically, that's that's only I can I can say at this point. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not very creative. It's not a very creative suggestion, but it's it's like very generic. But I, I think if, if that can be like managed well, it'd be nice. Yeah. Next questions. What do you think about the future of the CG industry? Well, 
no, I won't be certain for sure. But uh, again, like from where I when I started, where CG industry was was that then and now, I think it's 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 picking up. And again, like as I mentioned, it's fast pace. I think it's just gonna go on that same pace, and the work's gonna increase a lot for sure because. Like I, I've seen that jump come in because of all the, the streaming mediums. Um, yeah, basically, uh, uh, there'll be more content, and uh, I guess, uh, yeah. And then, what are some of your art-related hobbies? So it's just like CG-wise or in general? In general or CG wise, you know, whatever makes you like really passionate to do something. Oh, I do a lot of, uh, I play guitar a lot. Oh, I nice. I'm a horrible singer, but I sing anyway. <laughs> I think like, you know, those yeah. are the ways like where you can relax yourself and being present, right? So. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's a guitar. It's playing that. Having a hobby really helps you steam off some of the stuff, but it really keeps you sane that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one of them is that I paint a lot. It's just like some oil painting mediums have uh, uh, been inspired from your good friend Sujesh Shitty. Oh, nice. So yeah, he, he sometimes like chimes in and gives me some really good uh, tricks and techniques to um, you know make some good paintings. So yeah, I do that a lot too. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Gautam. Uh, it was really inspiring your work and everything. Um, so oh, guys, yeah, yeah it, it helped a lot. Now, um, actually, like the questions you answered, like it has a different view and different awareness about CG industry, and that helped me. Like even though I was in CG industry for a while, so the thought process is different from me to other person, right? Um, yeah. So guys, do you guys have any other question for Gotham? So just like you guys can ask him, or uh, you can put in the chat. So Kim is asking, how did you get your first job in the industry? Oh, I so when I moved here, I did a course in 3D animation from Seneca. Um, and then after graduation in 2013, I guess the week after, there was like a job fair going on in Toronto. And I kind of started prepping for it for all the companies that were like invited to like have a fair there so just to have an idea of just just didn't wanted to like walk up to somebody and like start showing my demo reel so i did some of uh, a good research on all the studios that were coming in animation vfx all of them even some of the game studios that were coming in i like read about them all the the main supervisors will be holding will be a, 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 a holding a spot there I learned a little bit about them also, and yeah, and luckily uh, one of the companies there was Crow VFX, and they were looking for a character artist. Luckily, again, like my demo reel had all the characters in it because I think that's something like all the newcomers, almost all of them do is like have like uh, a demo reel, especially in characters, because that's like more of the cool stuff, I guess. So yeah, and then basically they. Uh, like my work and uh, they called me in for an interview uh, and uh, it wasn't just about like character uh, assets stuff that they want wanted me to build but it was like like an overall be a generalist to the studio so that also kind of uh, uh, got into an advantage for me because I, I was also like Good with animation at that time because I was just like coming fresh out from my school, so uh, had a little bit idea about rigging also, also V-ray lighting, which was their preferred uh, renderer at that time. So yeah, basically all the check boxes worked there, and uh, got a job there. Damn, that's a lot of work uh, to just you know get the first job, eh? Yeah. Actually, speaking of which, uh, for your question where I could advise some artists is to um, like also have like a generalist uh, idea about other stuff also. Like no matter like whatever aspect you specialize in, 
I think it's always uh, nice to have uh, good knowledge about what's uh, where it's coming from in the pipeline and where it's going. So, like, if you're getting a concept, you should know how that concept came about and what's the, uh, yeah, you know, how with what intensity you have to follow that concept because it's very blind based and it has nothing to do with your own personal ideas. And then, like, taking that seriously and also have a general idea of, like, how it would uh, work in rigging down the line and how it would work with uh, the lighting, you know. So, basically, like, have the overall understanding really helps you a lot and, like, works to your advantage to get a job. Nice. Uh, so, uh, so, do you guys have any other questions for Gautam? So, do you advise any aspiring environmental artist or environment artist? Uh, for VFX? Uh, CG, uh, like in general, yeah. CG, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd say I get into Houdini because, like, for environment artists, um, let me read that question again. Yeah, I guess, like, get into learning Houdini and uh, for, for uh, Textrin Designer because I think that's uh, like two of the node-based software that... Alright, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the the like, node-based software that allows you to like make big, make big environments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically I would say like to get into that. Like, have, if you're coming in to get a job as an environment artist, having a good knowledge about Houdini uh, would be a plus point for that, yeah. And uh, if you're an environment artist who just want to like practice, I would say like, don't like make huge environments, but instead make dioramas uh, of your environment and like have that as a, have, have that as for display. Um, um, also another thing, it's like uh, some of my other people that I've worked with, the environment artists, the, like when they're making their demo reel, they would also like include some matte paintings there in their uh, in their demo reel. So that's, again, you know, it really helps uh, well to uh, get a job. If you're an environment artist, you make like a nice render in uh, Houdini or in Maya, and if you put it together in Nuke and, you know, put it out there uh, from your demo reel, it really works well. Oh, thanks, Gautam. That I think that will really help uh, for people. And uh, I also know that you also like um, sometimes sit on the interview panel too. Uh, so, what exactly you look for, like you know, like a modeler when you interview, like for example, like a character modeler or environmental modeler or a generalist. Like, what exactly you look for in an artist when you interview? I think the same thing that I mentioned that it's like uh, along with what the artist specializes in that would be like modeling and texturing i would also would be curious to know like how good of his skills are with the rigging and a little bit lighting here and there you know just to just to know that how just to have that basic understanding again uh, the other having a little people skill that would really work well like and that's where you, that's why you have your interview just to like get to know about the person's uh, personality per se like if he would he would or she would be like a nice team player and um, so that's something that i look forward to when um, doing interviews um yeah other than that uh, yeah overall like whatever a person is called in just for the reason that the demo reel was liked by me and the, the supervisors were um, checking it. Oh, yeah, nice. So. That's, a, that's a pretty neat way to uh, put it, right? And uh, I think uh, Venki have a question and uh, he's a comper. So what will you think after compers will obscure tiny details that you spend time for your amazing 3D work? Uh, I didn't really get that question. Now, it, the question is like, you know, uh, when you do this amazing work, like putting a lot of details in ZBrush or in Maya, so when it goes to comps, you know, sometimes they, you know, um, obscure the details, like, you know, the, oh. the tertiary forms and everything. 
So what, like, you know, what do you usually think about it? So it's, it's like a good thing or a bad thing? Is that, I don't know. Is that what the question is? I think it's it's kind of like you know what you want to think so it, it can be like a good thing for you or it can be a bad thing for you for like me sometimes like for example like if they do it you know sometimes I feel bad because like you know there are sometimes you know I spend a lot of time on it but it's not mm -hmm. yeah and it's not popping in the output well, what do you think um, like personally like you know at the end of the day you know uh, it depends because like sometimes for example I was working on this creature um, putting on a lot of hours and everything and it was showing in some shots and some shots they just literally blurred it so uh, the point being is like you know uh, when they give the asset you know they should have like good knowledge of you know what details need to be added in the chart or what need to be added in that asset in stuff like we are you know spending like you know two weeks on it and it's going to be just a blur in the shot right yeah i understand there's like sometimes when what my take on it is like if like there's nothing to get emotional about it i guess because as far as you're getting paid for the day in the studio i think it should be all right by that uh, i know that i have also worked on a lot of assets and it gets it has some promising screen time, but in the end, I see it's just like just two seconds or something. Yeah. Like a big set that I was working for like three weeks, four weeks, but now it hardly has any screen time. I think that's, again, another con yeah. that I would see in the industry, but I think people should be fine by that. But as you grow with it, I think these things like stop bothering you. Yeah. Uh, it's just about that part where you should feel that it was well practiced i know it didn't show up but that's fine it's like that's yeah. how, how it how it goes yeah it's exactly right because like um, at the end of the day you get used to it at, at one point right so you do it 50 times yeah. the 51st time you just like let it go yeah uh, and then it doesn't bother you yeah so i have another question from kim if you have a game art portfolio should you make one specifically for vfx or is it okay to apply with the same portfolio i think i'd make it different yeah there's like different aspects you have to the breakdown is very different when it comes to like showing stuff uh, from a game uh, engine point of view and like how it would work with uh, any like high-end uh, render so i'd say i would i would make it different just so that you're not confusing the, the person whom you the studio that you're applying to yeah keeping things very clear is, is this good yeah that was a nice question kim uh, um do you guys have any other question i think uh that's it uh guys and uh thanks Gautam. i really appreciate your time and you know i really learned a lot of stuff about cg as well as uh uh, your workflow and your thought process and i really appreciate you coming to this uh meetup group no problem okay thanks Happy guys yeah, yeah thanks guys thanks for joining thanks, thanks everyone bye okay bye